guys, it's Lisa from newlifeontheroad.com and David's just going to show us his technique of how he's going to make the front cupboards. At the moment, it just looks like a jigsaw puzzle and this is part two of this series. There is another video that you need to watch before watching this one and I'll have a link here in the video so you can go to part one. But David's about to explain what all these squiggly lines are for. Okay, continuing on with spiling our sheet for the front cupboards. Again, spiling allows you to determine the shape of a sheet for any given area. It doesn't matter what shape the area is. If you put enough points on your spiling plate, which is this, you can make any shape. You can even do a curved surface if you wish, as long as your spiling batten is flexible and will bend around the surface. Now, what I've done, I've set what I call a baseline. 15 millimetres in from a timber. The reason I use 15 millimetres, that's how much extra material I can hang down below the cupboard. That's a bit of leeway in case I make a bit of an error and have to cut things to move it up. Always, it's called green. If you can always do it, leave a bit of green because as accurate as this technique is, you still do make the odd little mistake. So leave yourself a little bit of extra timber down one side if you can and that will allow you to adjust things a little bit if need be. What I've done, I've come through and checked some of my points. This is one of my bottom base points for the bottom of the cupboard, which is the straight line. And I've lined it up there. And further along, I've checked the other points to line the board up so that it runs true along this line that I've drawn. The other thing I've had to do before I screwed it down was check that I had enough at the ends to fit the whole piece on because obviously as you can see my batten hangs my batten does hang out past the end of the board so you've got to determine that the board is far enough either side of the sheet to fit the whole thing on there once I've done that I can then start marking these points and this is where the unusual shape of the spiling batten comes back in wherever I lay I've drawn my lines I can lay that back on the lines line it up and I'll know that it's in the exact same spot it was when I marked the edge of the cupboard. So just to make sure that our people aren't confused here about this technique, do we need to screw this piece of wood down so it doesn't move? Yes. And how do you determine that you've got it in the right spot? Well, once again, by putting the batten back on some of the points that you've marked, some of the bottom line on this case, because I've got a straight edge on the bottom of the cupboard, I've lined it up with those. Okay. Again, at the end, line it up on some of your the furthest point on each end and make sure that you're far enough on the board or sheet that you're going to get the whole thing out. And if it's a narrow sheet, you would again do that up at the top to determine that you've got enough sheet up the top. I've got a full sheet here, so, so I've got plenty. To, I don't yeah, need to worry about that. You don't about need to worry about, about the top sheet. Yeah. So the next step in the process is quite simply lining up our filing batten, and then as accurately as possible, marking the points. So it's a bit like Dr. Dot when he's finished this process. It's not an easy process to go through. It's quite um, time consuming in the way that he has to match every piece up and every squiggly line up to make it into a dot but it would be a lot easier than him going backwards and forwards to the bus to try and measure up the piece that he does need to make um, it will hopefully make sure there's no errors at the end and he can just automatically slot his whole piece of wood straight into those cupboards that we're making at the front or I should say that he's making at the front um, we found that there was so much cupboard space wasted with what's there and it wasn't being used. Um, and with travelling with boys, we really need all the cupboard space we can find. It will hold mostly school books and things like pencils and pens and texters and things like that for their school supplies. <clears throat> so now will be the long process of him matching every um, dot to dot <laughs> and matching all of his shapes up. It's going to take a little while to get them all on there, but the thing is, some of these shapes you would be hard pressed to actually get 
them correct no matter how many times you try if you don't use a technique similar to this. Now I'm not going in any particular order here. I'm picking them out, marking them down. There is gaps in it and once I've done the bulk of them I will go back and try find the ones I've missed. There will be a, a point there that I've drawn for it. Um, but as you can see there's so many lines it's not hard to miss them but it does make it a bit easier to pick them out if you have got a few there. Um, once I've got these points marked out it's a matter of joining them together and if it's not dead on accurate it will be close. If anything it might be a little bit large which tends to happen when spiling but sometimes things do grow a little bit. Very unusual for them to actually be too small but um, We'll get to the point where I've got all the dots on there and we'll show you the next step in the process. Thanks for watching guys. It's Lisa and David from newlifeontheroad.com. There will be part three to the series coming shortly. Bye.